are 200 cadets from different schools in the Cape Peninsula spend their winter holidays receiving specialized military training from full-time instructors. Their attendance is entirely voluntary and they make the most of their opportunity. Their training includes stretcher drill, a knowledge of which is always useful. They are also taught first aid. Training of this kind serves to make cadet work more interesting. It also has the practical value of teaching the boys something useful, which will always stand them in good stead. And now comes one of the big moments of the holiday. Before they actually man a Beaufort anti-aircraft gun, the cadets are given a lecture explaining how it works. But they are eager to get going, particularly as they are to fire the gun at a moving target. This was provided by an aeroplane dragging a windstock. The boys were delighted to learn that they scored a number of hits on the target. That's good shooting, boys. And the guns keep getting bigger and bigger. Here's a six-inch coastal gun. Not a bad little toy for cadets, but the boys don't regard it as a game. They tackle the job seriously and with enthusiasm. Their aptitude and ability to learn quickly made a great impression on the instructors. Their only disappointment was that they were not actually allowed to fire the gun. They couldn't all tackle the job at the same time, and a number watched while they waited their turn to have a crack at the big gun. This experiment in making cadet training more interesting has been highly successful. So successful, in fact, that further training courses will be held during future school holidays. They typify the fine spirit of young South Africa. Gallery and Sechikov, Russian artists portray the grim drama of their war in paintings and sculpture. <laughs> Symbols of the new Russia, Lenin <laughs> and Stalin. <laughs> A huge canvas depicts scenes of battle on the Russian front. The painting is stark and real. Russian motherhood is epitomized in this fine work. The Germans are cursed. Civilians are always targets for their brutality. Refugees, a story which has become a commonplace in Russia. A guerrilla soldier, a foe whom the Nazis fear. This German prisoner is taking no chances. Russia's most famous girl sniper, who has killed hundreds of Germans. The exhibition illustrates the gallant fight the Soviet Union is putting up in a war to the death. Poland, 1939. A people who have known war as none other, wanderers upon the face of the earth, patriots from Poland near the end of the most amazing march in history. 3,000 weary miles they walked to find a haven of refuge. Many of the parents died, but many of the children were saved. And today the Polish flag flies over the sun-drenched South African Karoo at Oathorn, where a camp for Polish refugee children has been set up. Mr. Harry Lawrence, Minister of the Interior, Mrs. Lawrence and Princess Rodgerville arrive to inspect the camp. They find the youngsters looking fit, well and happy in their new surroundings. Plenty of sunshine and the peace of the Karoo have worked wonders with these children who have already endured the horrors of war. <laughs> Through the good offices of the Union government, 500 Polish children were able to find sanctuary, peace and rest in sheltered South Africa. The Union has provided the camp for the visitors and the Polish government pays for its upkeep. In a short change has worked well. Grimness and despair have given way to happiness. 
For these children, a new life has been opened up. They've been rescued from the tragedy of war. Life in the camp is not just a holiday. The children do a job of work by making the camp a self-contained unit. In addition to laundry work, the girls do the sewing and stitching for all the members of the camp. The boys are handy too at repairing shoes and making mud, of which there is a shortage. Not many Polish school books were brought to South Africa, and copies are made to supply all the children. Their education will not be neglected. A hospital, always a vital and essential service, is not forgotten. All the children are orphans, but a number learned recently that their fathers were safe and are serving with the Polish forces in the Middle East. Mr. Lawrence and his party stay for lunch to sample Polish cooking. Football is a popular gift, particularly with the camp pet, who gets his teeth into almost everything he sees. But even a football can't compete with a cat. A church service is conducted by the Reverend F. Kubiensky, who is also in charge of the camp. and his party watch a march first. The children can now hold their heads high. They have hope in the future. A Polish dance is provided for the visitors. The spirit of Poland lives again in this far-flung outpost under southern sky. their appreciation of the distinguished visitor's interest, the children present them with flowers, and since they are near Oathorn, with ostrich feathers and eggs. The people of South Africa are proud to provide a haven for these innocent children whose lives were almost wrecked by war. They have been saved, and the day is drawing near when they will once again be able to return to a free and liberated Poland. The spirit of Poland lives and her unconquerable, indomitable people fight on. Mm -hmm.